Miss Carmen was very friendly. So I'm the diplomat and my expert is a bargain. Okay, so for the interaction, uh, the foreign policy is generally described as the priorities uh, that guide a state's action or uh, its relations in dealings with the other countries. International relations, uh, the actions or patterns of the other country or strategies to promote the specific strategic plans all affect the development of foreign policy. Foreign policy of Malaysia, in the other hand, is primarily dominated and affected by three major key influences. It is well known for its uh, geographical position in South Asia, its status as a trade region and its distinct demography. Because of changing uh, domestic and external conditions, foreign policy can differ over time. Four years ago became an independent member of the Commonwealth. Half its people are Chinese, half Malays. They live in the center of Southeast Asia. Since the end of the war in Korea, Indochina and Malaya, things have been quiet. But observers expect a communist offensive in Vietnam and Laos, and possibly Cambodia, when the rains stop. To fight communism, the Malayan Prime Minister has suggested a plan to link Malaya, Singapore, Sarawak, Brunei and North Borneo into a greater Malaysia. This plan got an overwhelming vote of confidence in the Malayan parliament, and it was a personal triumph for Tunku Abdul Rahman, the 59-year-old prime minister who's led the country since independence. Okay, so for the Malaysian foreign policy under Tunku Abdul Rahman, from 1963 until 1970, Tunku Abdul Rahman was successfully overcome the challenges to carry out his Malaysian foreign policies, vision and mission during his tenure. It is also worth noting that he was the first secretary for the organization of the Islamic Conference. Due to many uh, communist challenges, the premiership uh, during Tunku, Tunku's era was, seems to be low-key. Tunku's era was more pro-Western and anti-communist with more efforts uh, to sustain the newly independent nation. Moreover, uh, Tunku also was worried about bridging the racial divide in Malaysia. Foreign policy received a breath of fresh air soon after Tun Razak became Malaysia's second Prime Minister. Prior to that, Tunku Abdul Razak followed a policy that was pro-West and pro-American in the big power rivalry, especially between Russia and the People's Republic of China. Tun Abdul Razak became the Malaysia's second Prime Minister after the former President, Tunku Abdul Rahman resigned from 1970 to 1976. His premiership differs from the Tunku's one because he led the country in a neutral way uh, rather being in the pro-Western direction. During Tun Razak's tenure, the country faced both external and internal challenges. For example, in Malaysia, there's, there is an attempt to increase the quality of life by providing the basic infrastructure and uh, social services. It appears to be important for the self-sufficient and the civilized society. As previously said, uh, Tun Abdul Raza established the diplomatic ties with the Communist bloc. Another uh, noteworthy addition was the uh, strengthening the international relations with the Singapore. Perdana Menteri Malaysia yang ketiga, Datuk Hussein On adalah putra Datuk On bin Jaffa, pengasas UMNO. Sebagai Perdana Menteri yang baru, beliau terus menggiatkan pembangunan sosial dan ekonomi negara. Next, our Tun Hussein On. 
Malaysia's third former Prime Minister. In Malaysia's foreign policy, he did not show major changes. He certainly upheld the neutrality policy that previous Prime Ministers had developed. The focus on relationships with Asian members was also felt by Tun Hussein on. In his opinion, Tun Hussein focused more on efforts to improve diplomatic ties with neighboring countries, especially with Singapore, Thailand, and Indonesia. Leaders from these countries thanked Tun Hussein on for his efforts to make Asia a productive vessel and in particular to improve strong ties with South Southeast Asian countries. Next is our Tun Dr. Mahadi's Malaysian foreign policy from 1981 to 2003. Seven years after the ethnic riots in Malaya, Tun Mahadi Muhammad was unexpectedly chosen as Tun Hussein On's successor. Tun Mahadi is the is the genuinely the best Malaysia has to offer, and his dynamic leadership has helped Malaysia become globally recognized for its reasonably impressive economic growth. Tun Mahade, despite being labelled as a secular Muslim, was clearly outspoken about the oppression of Muslim countries. In addition, he was a central player in the Islamic Cooperation Organization and other Muslim organizations. In building diplomatic ties with additional countries, and protecting the rights, ambitions, and purposes of the world nations Malaysia has benefited significantly from Tun Mahadi's legacy. Tun Mahadi has opened the door to close, closer bilateral ties with the northeastern Asian nations of Japan and South Korea, as did previous Prime Ministers. This action brought a number of international policies aimed at Malaysia's economic growth. Uh, Tun Mahade has broadened Malaysia's external ties with Central Asia such as Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Malaysia's foreign policy since 2003 until 2009. Tun Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, Malaysia's fifth Prime Minister, continued to keep the country engaged in international affairs. Malaysia was instrumental in the formation and adoption of the ASEAN Charter, which was ratified by all ASEAN member states and entered into force on December 15, 2008. Malaysia was also active in a shifting the OIC's focus from being solely focused on political issues to one that focus on the social economy and the development of Islamic countries. Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi also introduced the Islam Hadari concept, which promotes a type of civilizational Islam. It was accepted and recognized by the OIC member states at the OIC's third special summit in Mecca in December 2005. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. On behalf of all Malaysians, 
I would like to thank Yamat Burbaja, Tun Abdullah Ahmad Budawi, for his 31 years of exemplary public service to our country, his commitment to strengthening the institutions and fabric of our democracy, and for his graceful example as our leader. I am truly grateful to Yamat Burbaja Tun for his confidence in proposing my name as Prime Minister to Duliya Mahamulya Sri Baraka Baginda Yanuptanagno. And I am deeply honoured that His Majesty has consented to my appointment with this morning's swearing in ceremony. The Sri Lanka's relations foreign policy since 2009 until 2018. Malaysia continues to project a forward thinking and pragmatic foreign policy under his leadership while also facilitating trade, attracting foreign investment and projecting Malaysia as a stable and peaceful country. When he took office in April 2009, the Prime Minister also stated that Malaysia's foreign policy would be heavily influenced by the One Malaysia People First Performance Now concept. One of the key elements of the One Malaysia concept is the recognition that Malaysia's strength lies in its diversity. The Prime Minister also introduced the Government's Transformation Program GTP, which identified the ministry key results areas and key performance indicators as a promise of commitment by the government to the citizen. In accordance with this, the ministry has identified 40 key performance indicators to assess the ministry's success. Malaysia has also maintained excellent bilateral and multilateral relations with other countries through existing regional and international mechanisms of ASEAN, the United Nations and other organizations to which we belong. second leadership of Tun Dato Mahathir as Prime Minister of Malaysia, he has made minor changes from the previous leadership. Most of the foreign policy made by Najib Razak has been made unchanged. This consideration is because it is seemed to be effective to the state. So the policies that has been unchanged include Malaysia's ideology on certain issues. Tun Dr. Mahathir even emphasizes the focus on neutrality, non-aligned status and also pragmatic dealings with the United States, China, ASEAN centrality and also a disdain for great power hegemony. The development of Malaysia's economy through its trading relationship and also the promotion of human rights also is the issues that have been under the highlights of Tun Mahathir's leadership. So the changes made by Tun Dr. Mahathir were seen to be on the side of approaches, direction and also emphasis. The changes of approaches were changed to be more society friendly and also focuses more on the territorial dispute and the South China Sea that is, is harming the sovereignty of the state. Moreover, Tun Dr. Mahathir highlights the importance of securing the state from the people's irregular movement and also migration, cyber security and also terrorism.
following to the next Prime Minister is Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, or called as the 8th Prime Minister of Malaysia. He served since the early March 2020. Practically, Muhyiddin displayed major shift in governmental system, exclusively manageable during the COVID-19 outbreak on the basis of the foreign policy. Basically, Muhyiddin's follow the right national interest, cautious and carefully indicating in developing bilateral ties or multilateral ties within greater picture. The first point is pass the core function to the foreign minister, which is more clear and justifying directions, especially on Hishamuddin Hussein, as he needs to accountable on the base on the principle of the Malaysia foreign policy. Meanwhile, the second point is indicates uh, the continuousness in the military and defence issues, relations with uh, big power countries' domination, such as China and Russia, which uh, efficiently sustain a low-profile political position, which is non-belligerent and non-aggressive way. By that, Malaysia is practically applying the soft diplomacy by these hands. And the third point is that committed to multilateralism in advancing peace, security and justice around the globe. For example, the ASEAN Regional Cooperation is how Muhyiddin Yassin applied into this, uh, the newest and the current foreign policy into his adaptation and harmonization to make sure that Malaysia able to achieve the national interest. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, earlier this year, the United Nations launched the UN 75 initiative, inviting people around the world to share their aspirations hopes and priorities for the future. And nearly 40,000 people responded to the UN 75 survey within the first three months of its launching. While the interpretations of the findings may differ according to respective national circumstances, the message and direction that our people have shared are clear. They want a United Nations that better protects the environment promotes human rights and reduces conflicts. They also want As one of the vocal countries in the Southeast Asian region, Malaysia upholds the issues that occur all around the world and usually become the middle person of their solving. And in the foreign policy, Malaysia is greatly influenced by its strategic location in Southeast Asia, its attributes as a trading nation and also its unique demography. These three factors are the top prioritized key in the policy making of Malaysia in the terms of foreign policy. However, there are three other factors in which influence the foreign policy of Malaysia, which are individual, role or position, government, society and also system. Due to this strategic position of Southeast Asia, Malaysia must abide to the ASEAN Charter in which one of the clause is members of the ASEAN should not accept the usage of the military in foreign policy. Other than that, the economic aspect of trading nation with Malaysia gross domestic product highlights the importance of international trading to Malaysia. It is also one of the fundamental of Malaysia foreign policy making. It has influenced Malaysia in terms of Malaysia's upholding the digital economy through the Industrial Revolution. This policy of Industrial Revolution in Malaysia is to ensure that the international trading of Malaysia will always be secured. Moreover, Malaysia's foreign policy is also influenced by the role factor, which is individual. In this case, it is influenced by a group of people who are responsible for the making of a foreign policy particularly the leader of the state. This is somehow depicts that the Prime Minister of the current tenure will be the main person in ordering the framework of the country. This is because every Prime Minister has their own ideology, ideology and also vision and mission. So in example, 
we can see the difference of the leadership of Tun Abdul Raza and also Tunku Abdul Rahman. As we can see earlier during the first Prime Minister leadership, Tun Tunku Abdul Rahman, he was being pro to the West. However, he was anti communist. But during the second leadership of the Prime Minister, of our second Prime Minister, Tunku Abraza, he was seen to be more open in terms of foreign affairs, in which he was more open to the communist country. Hence, it is clearly states that individual influences the foreign policy. In a nutshell, Malaysia's foreign policy is guided by the fundamental to ensure that the country is stable, to ensure the security of stakeholders is protected, and most importantly, Malaysia's sovereignty are always protected. It is also clear that foreign policy of the country could affect the development and the security of the state. This is because foreign policy is the image of, an, of a country. Hence, if the foreign policy is wrongly outlined, it surely will bring a bad image to a country. Moving on to the next section, which is Malaysia bilateral relations in international level. So, to understand, Malaysia is applying the neutrality and also fostering a great relation within all the nations. Basically, Malaysia having their ties with China, Japan, Russia and United States. The first is Malaysia-China relations, is that they are fostering a greater economic and trading sector in general. China is one of the Malaysia's biggest trading partners and major key player contributing towards the national interest looking upon the economic factors. As a matter of fact, Malaysia trade ties with China have fully fledged since uh, any country of the world, uh, especially in the times of the financial crisis in 1997 until 1998. Next is Malaysia-Japan relations. Is both countries look upon economic prosperity and cooperation for more than 50 years since 1957 whereby the most significant and well-known policy implemented is the Look East policy from Tun Dr. Mahade and the nearest policy is that Japan-Malaysia joint statement on strategic partnership which uh, those underscore the cooperation for peace and stability and achieving open and stable areas. Meanwhile, Malaysia-Russia relationship is uh, actually absorbed and rooted on the purpose of the defense and trade to support retain diplomatic interchange among the chief echelons and foreign ministers on status quo issues consensually and internationally. And the regular act between two countries of foreign ministry joins actively embraces official meetings and duty visits in advance. Moreover, Malaysia-US relationship is that Malaysia considered US as the closest ally in trading partnership and economic preferences. Of course, the, U the USA has been favoured Malaysia for a long time as a upcoming developed nation. According to the US Department of State, the United States and Malaysia, in economic sense, reached the bilateral trade accounted to astonishing value in 2018 within 52.2 billion US dollar in top leading assignation. Both countries lies on safety priorities, chiefly counter-terrorism, maritime fear recognition and engrossed in bilateral and multilateral preparation official appointments on a greater basis. Thank you. Next, we will see about Malaysia's participation in intergovernmental organizations. United Nations is essential to worldwide attempts to resolve humanity's challenges. More than 30 associated organizations, also known as the United Nations system. 
Day by day, the UN and its family of organizations work for human rights protection, the preservation of the environment, the combating of diseases, promotion of prosperity, and poverty reduction. Secondly is the World Trade Organization, also known as WTO. It's the only world organization concerned with trade laws between countries. The WTO or agreements are the are at the core of this concluded, signed and ratified in their parliaments by the majority of trade nations worldwide. The aim is to support manufacturers, exporters and importers of products and services in their activities. Thirdly is the World Health Organization, WHO, is the legislative and organizing authority of the United Nations. It is responsible for leading the world in health issues, guiding the health science agenda, establishing guidelines and standards. The regional position of Malaysia to help shape the um, H- the WHO Framework Convention for Control of Tobacco demonstrates the value of international health diplomacy in promoting public health and its impact for individual countries' public policies. Fourthly is the Southeast Asian Nation Association, which was established in Bangkok, Thailand on 8 August 1967 by the signature of the Bangkok Declaration. Myanmar, Singapore, Thailand, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia are members of ASEAN. The ASEAN Secretariat is located in Jakarta, Indonesia. Lastly, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation was formed as a result of increasing interdependence between Asia Pacific countries, which constitute about half of the world's goods trade. In 1998, Malaysia assumed its position as chairperson of APEC. The goals of the APEC are to support regional and global economic development to promote positive gains through the movement of goods, resources, and technology to eliminate obstacles and to improve markets and services in accordance with the principles of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Commerce and Trade, also known as GATT. Theories developed to serve as tools for a better understanding international phenomena have also changed and evolved. In explaining state behavior, major theories about how international relations work such as realism and new realism have focused on power, national interests, and the international system. This viewpoint was changed in the 1990s by an emerging approach known as social constructivism, which sought to provide alternative theories centered on ideas, norms, language, identity, culture, and religion. More importantly, it aims to recognize international political governance, identity, development, and, inter- and national interest in a way that alters people's perceptions of this concept. Malaysia can be better understood by analyzing their actions as members of several multilateral institutions, such as ASEAN, OIC, and the Commonwealth from a constructivist perspective. Malaysia's identity as an Islamic state is fundamental in directing foreign policy and its participation in multilateral international organizations by tracing the history of Malaysia's international relations. Constructivism is the view that material world shapes and is shaped by human action and interaction. Constructivists have focused on the examination of non-material factors such as norms, ideas, knowledge, and culture. In sum, constructivists firmly believe that international relations are made up of social facts which can exist only by human agreement. The most significant additional factors in this content are in the subjective belief as shared collective understanding.
As a conclusion, uh, it is notable that in every era of the premiership of uh, Malaysian foreign policy has its own focus and objective according to the leader. It is undeniable that uh, every leadership has focused on the how to improve the nation and the sovereign as well. Furthermore, uh, the new Malaysian foreign policy is more mindful and aware about the current global issues and behaving non-aggressively as a result of the current Prime Minister's governance and maintains uh, a low-key political profile. Malaysia also uh, is well known for its sovereignty and its involvement in the international level. Even though Malaysia is a third uh, world country that is developing from the aspect of economic and so on, it is the best example uh, in making a diplomatic relation with the other countries.